Lieutenant Pine, the Lieutenant of the Services of Amy Lacey, the company of Sean Trustee of the Brian Corporation. The full group consists of almost 30 consular court representatives, accompanied by Shrine Trustees Ms. Sue Blake and Mr. Roger Clifton, and Shrine Life Governor, Lieutenant Colonel Adrian Lombardo. The consular corps, uh, followed by the Victorian Defence Service Chiefs and representatives of the Victoria Police, accompanied by Shrine Trustee Colonel Michelle Campbell and Shrine Governor Group Captain Annette Holliday. Following on behind the Victorian Government representatives, the final members of the official party, the Honourable Daniel Andrews, Premier of Victoria, and the Honourable Melissa Price, representing the Prime Minister of Australia and the Federal Government. They are accompanied by Air Vice Marshal Christopher Spence, Chairman of the Shrine Trustees, as they pass now the Senator. able to, would you please stand for the arrival of the Governor of Victoria. Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Dessau, Governor of Victoria, and Mr Anthony Howard are approaching. They're about to be greeted by the Premier of Victoria, the Honourable Daniel Andrews, the Honourable Melissa Price, representing the Prime Minister, and the Chairman of the Shrine of Remembrance Trustees, Air Vice Marshal Christopher Spence. Shortly after the Governor's arrival, the Governor will receive the Royal Salute, then inspect the Navy Guard.
Victorian Opposition, Dr Samantha Ratnam, Leader of the Victorian Greens, the Honourable Melissa Price, Federal Minister for Defence Industry, representing the Prime Minister of Australia, Dr T Jim Chalmers, Federal Shadow Treasurer, representing the Leader of the Federal Opposition, the Honourable Ted Bayou, former Premier of Victoria, members of state and federal parliament, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor Sally Capp, Lord Mayor of the City of Melbourne, Air Vice Marshal Chris Spence, 
Chairman and, uh, and all the trustees of the Shrine of Remembrance, Dr Robert Webster, State President of the RSL Victorian Branch, Senior Officers of the Australian Defence Force, former and current servicemen and women, members of the Consular Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, and it is wonderful to see so many uh, young Victorians with us this morning. Can I start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathering and by paying my respects to their elders past and present and to any elders here with us this morning. Just before 11 a.m. this morning, I had the privilege to lay a wreath of rosemary on behalf of the people of Victoria at the Stone of Remembrance in the Shrine's Inner Sanctuary, precisely as the sun's rays were about to fall on the inscription, Greater Love Hath No Man. I was conscious that I was participating in a ceremony that has now occurred 100 times at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in commemoration of the Armistice Agreement signed at 11 a.m. on the 11th of November 1918 to end the First World War. That day was, like today, a Monday when the guns fell silent on the Western Front in France. Four years of brutal fighting ended. The costs of war were counted. More than 416,000 Australians had volunteered for service. More than 60,000 Australians were killed and almost another 160,000 were wounded or taken prisoner. The announcement that the war had ended brought joy and jubilance, mixed with deep sadness and reflection as to all that had been lost. One year later, the ritual of observing two minutes silence at exactly the time of day when the armistice was signed commenced. Some believe that it was an Australian journalist, Edward Honey, who inspired the commemoration. Appalled by the rowdy celebrations of the armistice the year before, Honey, living in London at the time, wrote a letter published in the London Evening News on the 8th of May 1919, calling for the silence. And so we in Australia, as in the countries we fought alongside, have stopped 100 times now on this day to remember the burden of war, its legacy, and the memories of loved ones and comrades. In Victoria, for much of those 100 years, this shrine has been a significant place to come together on this day. Indeed, it was on Armistice Day 1927 that its foundation stone was laid. And seven years later, on Armistice Day 1934, that the shrine was formally dedicated in front of a crowd of, a run, of around 300,000 people, more than half of the population of Melbourne at the time, who gathered here to observe the silence. Today, the 100,000 Australians lost in all wars and conflicts and all those who served are commemorated on what is now known as Remembrance Day. If ever we need to, rem uh, if ever we need to remember or we need a reminder of what binds us as Australians, it is these men and women. They are us. They've come from first Australian families, from families here for several generations and from amongst the more recently arrived, from the cities and from small towns, from different backgrounds and of different ages. On Remembrance Day 1993, former Prime Minister, the Honourable Paul Keating, spoke at the funeral service for the unknown soldier in Canberra. He spoke of the lives lost, he spoke of the loss of their hope and energy, but he spoke too of what we had gained from their story of bravery and sacrifice, of a deeper faith in ourselves and in our democracy, and a deeper understanding of what it means to be Australian. It's those things and our gratitude for them that unites us as we stand here together in remembrance. 
On this day, it's our silence that says so very much. It's our silence that reminds us that we must not forget. And in our silence, we are reminded to think of all those who are serving now, and we wish them safely home. Let's we forget. Time for the shrine gunner to fall out. 